The first uh, session focused on faith as sight. Yes, you have the other side of the lake as your destination. You experience a lot of opposition, of hindrance. But you can get there, depending on your sight. Do we see Jesus? Or do we see only the problem? So para manubuho, sino ba ang nasa foreground, sino ba ang background? Kung minsan ang nasa foreground, ang tinitig na natin yung problema, si Jesus nasa background lang. E lalo tayong lulubog niyan. Dapat ang tingin kay Jesus at habang nakatingin kay Jesus, background yung yung wins at makakalakad ka sa tubig. At hindi ka mag nag-iisang maglalakad kasama mo si Jesus. Then you have no fear. Nakikita ko na mayroon dito mga religious o mga yun, mga superiors, mga sisters, alam nyo, hindi rin naman except, accepted sa mga mga bagyo, mga winds, no po. Yung, yung iba po ay nakakaranas talaga ng napakalaking opposition. But to them, it's the year of consecrated life. It's a, it's, a, it's a time to review how do we see? Is our sight focused on Jesus? And with Him, we walk on the waters, stormy waters. Or are we getting hooked? Nakatingin lang tayo doon sa 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 bundong napakagulo and then patakataka once in a while we try to look for Jesus. Maybe it's time to reverse. It's time to review. So that we won't be eaten up by fear. But it's faith. We go beyond fear through faith. A sight. A sight. For this second session though, Allow me to focus on another way by which we can go beyond fear. If in the first session we focused on faith as a way of, of, of seeing Jesus, fixing our gaze on Jesus, for this second session we will shift to another mode. And here I will use the uh, episode of another crisis in the life of the disciples of Christ. Yung nakita natin, the crisis was how to reach the other side but the boat tossed around about my winds. Ito po, uh, this is the episode of the feeding of the 5,000. Matthew 14, 13 to 21. Actually, oh, this episode came earlier. Pagkasunod po eh. Ito muna multiplication of the loaves and then afterwards, the uh, walking on the waters. Pero yung pinalitan ko. Uh, and you will see the reason why. At tinuna ko yung waters and now the feeding of the 5,000. Let me read the text. When Jesus heard of it, meaning the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. 
dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, there is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, bring them to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. I wonder how many we are. Are we more than 5,000? Have no fear. <laughs> Father Nono will feed all of us. Have no fear. Have no fear. Have no fear. I think we are all faced with this. Uh, we have individual stories of our boats, personal boats, family boats, business boats. The neighborhood boats being tossed, and we do not know whether we can reach our destination. Ito naman, nako, another type of frightening situation. The crowds follow Jesus and the disciples. There are different versions of this story. One version was Jesus even invited the disciples to go to a deserted place to rest. Kasi pagod na pagod sila sa kanilang mission. So they needed time to rest. And it was also a time and a place for prayer, resting in the Lord. But according to Matthew, Jesus saw again while he was praying, while he was in a deserted place to pray, he saw the crowds, the sick with them, and he had compassion for them. Tignan nyo, but this is a challenge to us. When you are in deep prayer, you see the needs of others. Ganun si Jesus eh. We cannot make prayer life our involvement in the church as a shield in order not to see the needs of others. Before I proceed, no means of God, when I was still a young priest, why did I say that? And I'm going to be easy to say, Cardinal, you still look young. So, hindi naman ninyo. Okay, ah, ayun naman. Oh, really? Thank you. We have a free lunch. I noticed there was this very active church worker. Ang aga-aga, early morning ng Sunday, nandun na siya hanggang saan na? Yung closing time, mga hanggang 9 o'clock na ng gabi. From 4.30 in the morning, serving me. Hindi saan kinausap ko. Sabi ko, alam nyo, we really admire you. Talagang you inspire us. Kami, we have breaks. If I take the 5 o'clock mass, my next mass will be at 7, so we have a complete break. Kayo, you stay the whole day until the evening time. Sabi ko, mabuti na lang. Your family is also understanding and generous, no? They allow you to to serve in the church. Sabi naman niya, eh kaya nga po ako nagsaserve eh. Ayaw kong makita yung asawa ko at saka yung anak ko masyadong pagulong sa bahay. 
pagpapanigin, ilan sa inyo ang active sa simbahan para hindi nyo makita ang inyong asawa at mga anak. Uh, service in the church, prayer, does not lead to blindness. When you pray, you see the bold steam muscle. When you pray, just like Jesus, you see those who are suffering. And your heart is moved with compassion. Pero dito pa lang nagsimula ang problema ng mga apostolos. This compassion of Jesus. So instead of resting, He cured the sick. And according to St. Mark, He taught them because to Him, they appeared like sheep without a shepherd. Si Father Toto, lagi ako minibiro, magpahinga ka naman. Magpahinga ka naman. Ano ka magpapahinga kung may ganitong libo-libo na parang mga tupa? Yung ibang kapitin. Ano ka magpapahinga? You, you feed. You feed to the best that you could. No? Yung ganyan. Pero problema yan. Sa mga apostolates, what happens to their rest? If Jesus starts responding to the crowds, that means they also have to cut their rest short. Pati sila siguro, hindi na rin makakain. At nagugutong na sila. And look at the fear of the disciples. It's getting dark. We should. How do we feed them? And in another version, they said, we need a hundred days wages to pay, to feed all of this. Nakakatakot magpakain ng limang limo na lalaki. Not counting the women and the children. Hindi ko alam kung sino ang mas malakas kumain eh. Yung children, yung lalaki or what. Pare-pare ko na yata eh. No? And the children need to eat. No? So, yeah, how did, you can understand the fear of the disciples. Ano ka bang realistic ito? Kaya, look at their, their mindset. They're very good, the very practical people. So they recommended to Jesus something. It's getting dark. You're getting carried away by your preaching. Please. Send them home. Send them home so that they can provide for their own needs. Look at how fear, when fear is part of the planning session. Ano ang naging plan ng mga apostolos? Patuwiin. Let them take care of their own needs. Hindi na natin problema yan. So if there are planners here at kung ano-ano, please look at that. How much of our planning is motivated by fear? Akala natin may isang planning, managing, administering yung pala. Panic na panic. And look at the, 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 the game plan of the disciples because of fear. Fear of the cost. Fear probably of the responsibility that they have to face. And fear that their much-awaited recreation, resting, spa, will be greatly affected. So their proposal was, kanya-kanya na lang kain at scatter them, dismiss them. But look at the response of Jesus. Jesus said, no need to do that. You 
give them something to eat. Anik pain na naman. <laughs> Talagang fear. Lahab fear. But, again, where is Jesus coming from? How is Jesus responding to the fear of the disciples? Jesus is coming from where he started. Compassion for the crowds. When you start calculating, when you start computing, when you start uh, estimating how many mouths to feed, ah, magkano ba ang kinikita ko? Ako, 100 days wages. The only thing, <laughs> the only thing that will happen is that you will really be afraid. And the solution that you propose will be scatter, set them all. That's not my responsibility anymore. But Jesus conquers the fear by going back to his heart. Compassion. And look at what compassion does. The calculating disciples said, Eh, lili ba ang ano eh? Lili ba ang... Ang tinapay. At dalawa na mga fish. Pagbalik-balik na rin uman. Paano mapapakain ang lahat? So, humanly speaking, the fear of the disciples was justified. But for Jesus, for a compassionate heart, meager resources, when blessed, when brought back to God, and blessed by sharing hands, the meager resources could feed more than 5,000 at May X Trapa, 12 wicker baskets. So that means the crowds could stay for the next meal. No need to send them home. The compassion of Jesus gathers people. Fear scatters people. Baka meron dito mga business people, no? Kapag meron kang empleyado na parang, oh, hindi ko ito gusto, ipipat kaya ng branch. Scatter. Scatter. Baka, ipipat mo na lang yan. At lalo hindi ko nakikita, mas palatag ang buhay ko. Imagine if that happens in the family. Imagine if that happens uh, uh, in a religious community. Imagine if it happens uh, uh, in the relationship between parents and children. If our fear dominates, our only solution is dismissal, scattering. But how did Jesus combat the fear? Compassion. And with compassion came the possibility of gathering, remaining one community. Give them something to eat. Mga kapatid, one casualty of fear is compassion. A society governed by fear will lose compassion and will justify the loss of compassion. Beautifully justify it, but underneath it is just fear. Kanina nagkwento ako doon sa karanasan ko sa bus sa New York. Balik tayo sa New York. Naglalakad kami doon eh, tatlo kami eh. Isang madre, isang nurse na Amerika, at saka ako. Yung madre ay Pilipina. Hindi ko na sasabihin ko ang congregation kasi may members ng congregation na nandito eh. 
makatanong yung kanila, sino yung katika? Sino yung madre namin ko? Mamaya, napitan nyo na lang ako. <laughs> Lalakad ka rin ako. And then, gabi doon, sasakay na kami ng bus pabalik sa Washington, D.C. No? And, uh, uh, it, it was a baby, ano ba yung mga around 11 in the evening. No? So, when we were close to the bus terminal, nakita namin may isang tao na biglang nag-collapse on the, on the sidewalk na nag-collapse. E di kami tatlo, takbo kami. Takbo, no? to assist. Yung isa kasi nurse, isa padre, o pare, siyempre, tatakbo rin ako. <laughs> when we reached the person, yung ibang tao surrounding him said, do not touch him. Hindi, sabi naman yung isang, I'm a nurse. Sabi ng padre, I'm a sister. Ako ba, I'm a priest. <laughs> If he's a Catholic, I will avoid him or what? Or pray over him. Pero tingnan nyo, a society governed by fear, sabi nila, do not touch him. If he dies, you will be soon. So yung fear na, ay, baka ako masun. And because you are afraid of being soon, compassion disappears. Wag mo na lang, pretend you did not see. Tawid tayo, tawid, tawid. <laughs> At nakakatawa, pero look at what society has become. Even parang instinctive compassion is being checked and even prevented from flowering, from blossoming because of our fear. Nabalitaan ko ba sa isang bansa, I won't mention which country, no? some parents for fear of being sued by their own children or by their neighbors para i-discipline yung children nila, they call the police into their homes. Kasi baka ako ma-accuse na ano, ganito, so then the police do that. So kung yung anak mo ayaw kumain, nagtatangro, police. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether this will become the, the norm, no? but uh, we have to evaluate. No? There are things that we need to, to really safeguard, but what my concern is, is fear the only one driving us? What happens to compassion? What happens to a society where compassion slowly dies and what takes over is fear? It is not bad to engage in planning. It is not bad to calculate. It is not bad at all to be realistic in terms of seeing our, how our resources are and how far the resources will go. But I'm appealing to everyone. I'm appealing even to the religious communities here and the religious leaders. When you, when you plan, When you administer things, is fear the major consideration? Where is compassion? Compassion will make miracles happen. If in the first session we saw how faith produces the miracle, a Peter can walk on water here. When you have compassion, the compassion of Jesus, the heart of Jesus, when we enter that heart, another miracle will happen. The hungry will be fed. And we do not need to dismiss people. We don't need to scatter the community. Already be informed. The secret of Jesus is compassion. Have no fear. Instead of fear, put in compassion. Put compassion in your heart. And Jesus fulfills this. 
daily in the Eucharist. He gives us bread. The bread that He is, He is the bread of life. The Eucharist is the sacrament of compassion. Come to me. You who are weary. You who are tired. You who have been sinking in the waters of your life. You who have been deterred from reaching your goals because of contrary winds. You who are afraid, seeing crowds, and seeing how poor you are, how meager your resources are. You who feel small, little, how can I face this big mission when I have just five loaves and two fish? When I know my capacities. When we go to the Eucharist, when we adore, our eyes are fixed on Jesus. And then Jesus who says, this is my body for you. This is my blood for you. This is the same Jesus who teaches us his compassion. In the Eucharist, we have a bread to nurture us, to give bread to others. The compassionate heart of Jesus that conquers fear. A community is recreated. Fear isolates and scatters. Compassion binds us together. Makes of strangers, neighbors, brothers and sisters. No wonder many of the appearances of the risen Lord have a Eucharistic tone. Jesus appearing to them in a meal. Jesus being recognized at the breaking of bread. They knew who Jesus really was. His lifestyle. The compassion that made him feed the hungry. The compassion that made him break his body as the bread of life so that no one will become hungry and fear is conquered. I know many of us now when we are afraid, when we feel lost, when we feel helpless, one of the sources of our strength is the blessed sacrament. Pag pumunta ka dyan, you are assured you're not alone. It is I. I am really present. And you can come to me anytime because I am here. I was the first one to come to you. So you can come to me anytime. And there before the Blessed Sacrament, our hearts filled with fear and becoming harder because of fear, of cynicism, of woundedness, our hearts start to melt. For we know we are before someone who has been compassionate to us. Ito po dalawang ito. Many more are to faith, compassionate love. Faith, fix your gaze on Jesus. No way is with you. And secondly, compassion. With these two, we can go beyond fear. We can generate communities. The poor in this year of the poor and beyond. The poor will be cared for. We will not fear the poor. We will love the poor. And we will see Jesus in them. Whenever a poor person approaches us, it is as though Jesus comes to us and says, It is I. It is I. 
What a beautiful combination. Jesus coming to us in the form of the needy crowds and he eliciting faith and compassion will make us rise above our fears. Mga kapatid, tumahimik po tayo sa dali and let us go deep into our hearts as we prepare for the Eucharistic adoration. Jesus telling us, it is I. And at the same time, I am the food for the crowds. I am compassion. Have no fear. Have no fear. Let us look into our hearts and recall the times when because of fear, we fail in compassion. We fail in responding to the needs of others. Let us ask pardon and without fear turn to Jesus. 